right, guys, I hope you're all doing well, and welcome to our mini podcast video in which we're going to be ranking all of the Age of Empires 4 civilizations based on their strength in the free-for-all format. So it should be quite a bit of fun. We're going to go through every single Civ, talk about why I think they deserve their respective rank, and go from there. So without further ado, let us waste no more time and talk about Zhu Xi's legacy. So these obviously came with the newest DLC, and I think that Zhu Xi's legacy is a rock-hard S-tier. Um, China was already very, very good in FFA. They had some great late game armies between their top tier artillery, really good handgunners, making them really, really powerful in the Imperial Age. But Zhu Xi's legacy takes it to another level. Not only do they have one of the fastest, I think they have the fastest castle age in the game. They can get it just after six minutes. And we all know how important it is to secure infinite kind of perpetual gold income in this game, especially in free for all. So being able to go Zhu Xi's, go fast castle, grab, you know, five or six relics, pull back into your base and just macro from there defensively and just also have the best late game army in the game probably with the ottomans uh with their bombard so jushi's legacy does have an imperial landmark where you can choose a unique text so you can get the imperial guard cavalry which are super good in the yuan raiders and then you can also get the bombard cannons that do aoe damage it is one of the most disgusting imperial armies so their ability to uh, boom up with you know two tc if they want to with their song dynasty to fast castle and get all the relics on the map before anybody can really contest you while also having one of the best Imperial armies in the entire game, I think makes Jushi's Legacy just like a rock, rock hard S tier. Like they are just so damn good. So next up, we're going to be talking about the English. For me, I think the English are an A tier Civ. They have a really, really good steady infinite gold mechanic. So I believe if you have a relatively optimized farming situation in Imperial Age, late game England, uh, you're going to be able to get like around a thousand gold a minute, which is really good. That can sustain prolonged Imperial engagements on top of them having one of the best food economies in the entire game with their awesome farm. So they're not going to run out of food and really long grindy fights. They're getting attack speed from all of their infrastructure uh, so they can be aggressive. They have good trebuchets, which are one of the best tools for destroying wonders at a great distance. And they have just really steady gold. They don't really have any vulnerabilities in the game. Like England in the uh, early, uh, early you know, Dark Ages, going to be able to fend off cheese. Not that too many people do that, but sometimes it happens in FFA. Uh, their Feudal Age is really good, so you're not going to want to mess with English in the Feudal Age. It's really hard to take down a good English player in Feudal Age. Their Castle Age isn't bad. No, they're certainly solid. They have, uh, you know, they can get the White Tower if they want to, to defend their base or to claim important parts of the map and resources, a trade post, or set it up to defend the Wonder in the back. And Berkshire Palace is insane, right? So what English players will do is have Berkshire Palace in the back of their base, defending their Wonder as their last landmark, and it is really good. So overall, England's like, they're easy to use. They have solid armies. Um, their Imperial armies aren't like as crazy as let's say Jushis or like the Ottomans or anything like that, but... Uh, they're still pretty respectable. They have good men at arms. Their hand cannoneers are very solid if you have the attack speed bonus from the network of castles. Uh, and on top of that, the trebuchets are also good with shattering projectiles. They can be impactful in actual fights and knock down enemy artillery and whatnot. Yes, in a straight up fight, like a 200, 200 English army probably won't beat Jushis or Ottomans or some of those other just like brutal late game armies. But the thing is, if they can take down half of the enemy's army, their insane food economy, their perpetual gold can drown people just in waves and waves of English soldiers. So it sometimes doesn't matter. But I think England is a very good steady sieve in terms of FFA format. And, you know, one of my favorites in 1v1 too, but today we're talking about FFA. So yeah, they're great. Highly recommend them. If you're newer to the game, I think they're one of the best sieves to play. Extremely resilient, really fun units, and pretty solid in most ages with good steady gold and food income throughout the entire game. If if everybody's resource starved, England's going to be one of the big powerhouses too. If nobody's trading and the relics are kind of sparse, England is going to be cackling because they have that good steady gold and good luck Good luck pushing like a top tier English player who's defending a wonder like one on one. That's really, really difficult. So Yep, England's going to be A tier. So next up, we're going to do the Byzantines. Byzantines, I would actually put in B tier. I think that, you know, they have some decent economy that can kind of progress over the course of the game with the cisterns. Because the worst thing about Byzantines in general is their feudal age defense. And this is my anecdotal opinion in 1v1, right? And that usually doesn't happen in FFA. Usually in FFA, the games get to castle or imperial before somebody attacks you. And Byzantines are pretty solid in both imperial as well as castle. So you have your cisterns, which have some good applications. Not only do they increase your gather rate by typically 25% in the late game, which is really good, but you can also use them to speed research technology. You can also use them to give your buildings damage reduction, which is super good. If you have a cistern near like a wonder or your keeps and you're trying to defend, you can get 25% less damage, which is super cool. So that's a really nice, but what's also awesome is olive oil. So in long FFA games, Byzantine players can bank up like a million olive oil, right? 
And then you just make spears and chap units. And by the, by the way, Byzantines have the best spear units in the game. So when things get scrappy and people are starving out, Byzantines are going to have a, a shield wall of spears that take 50% less damage from ranged. And that's 50% less damage from hand cannoneers, whatever shooting them. So their front line's really good. And then, you know, typically in most late game Byzantine games in FFA, I find myself with, you know, 15,000 to 30,000 olive oil. So then you can make mercenaries. You can make Streltsy, you can make Chinese grenadiers. Uh, you can use the Imperial College to spam out Nesta Bees and Hui Hui Pows. Like late game Byzantines are not a slouch. They can come out, they can send waves of Streltsy or Grenadiers. They can get Ghulams, which is badass too, because Ghulams can make, uh, they can make artillery in the field, which can be very useful for sieging and pushing wonders. I think Byzantines are pretty underrated in FFA. I wouldn't say they're as good as like English, um, but you know, Byzantines are no joke. They can definitely go fisticuffs. The olive oil mechanic makes them good when they're starved. So if Byzantines don't have any resources in terms of gold, uh, they can, you know, make olive oil units and still have a good quality army despite not having any gold. And secondly, the last thing is Byzantines do have an interesting cheese in FFA. It's not like that powerful, but they can spam buildings to get stones. So if you build 10,000 wood worth of buildings, which oftentimes there's plenty of wood, so you can do this, it's going to return 3,000 stone to you, which is a really not a bad exchange uh, if you're looking at it through like the lens of a market or something. I like it quite a bit. So yeah, that's going to be the Byzantines. Next up, we're going to do French. French are a hard S tier for me, um, just because of Guildhall. That's literally it. Um, stone and Wonders are probably one of the easiest win cons like in the game, right? So uh, in terms of FFA, not 1v1, obviously. But having the guild hall is just insanely powerful, right? That landmark, it did get nerfed, so they have 50% less now. But even still, like a French player can just sit in their base and, and just defend. And a lot of times, if they're just defending adequately using their knights and arbalists, both of which are really good units that scale well over the course of the game, people won't mess with them. You know, nowadays they will, because people in our community have gotten very good at FFA, so they know they need to take down French players. But like even with the 50% nerf to the guild hall stone generation, like they can sit there and have 15, 20,000 stone in the late game slap down, you know, like eight or nine keeps and a wonder and have the red palace back there. And that is so hard to crack through. And the guild hall can then switch to gold and give you gold. Without guild hall, French would be like way down to the pits. But with that landmark, I think they're an S tier save. And their late game armies aren't bad either. Not amazing, but still pretty decent for sure. So next we're going to do Joan of Arc. Joan of Arc is S tier for me too. I would say Joan of Arc's even better than the French um, because she can, she's just better than the French, like all, overall. You have this hero character that automatically respawns. She can summon for units. She can summon cannons when she's on the attack. Uh, Joan can also produce her champions from keeps, which is really nice because if you're spamming 15 keeps to defend a wonder, you have a million cannon towers. You can produce the champions in the backfield. And yeah, Joan of Arc is just nuts overall. Um, I think in FFA, she's just like a better version of France, being able to consecrate buildings. Uh, she can capture sacred sites, which is good too. Like there's so much that's so nice having this like hero character on the map. So yeah, they are going to be S tier for me. So next up, we're going to dig into the pits a little bit. We're going to go with Ayubids. I think Ayubids are um, a D tier sieve. I think they're they are really, really bad in FFA. Um, in 1v1, they're awesome because they have some mechanics that in an isolated 1v1 scenario, they can get ahead of you for long enough to be able to win. But in a long, grindy game, I find they fall off. Their unique units, Desert Raiders, aren't like that amazing in the late game. They're actually pretty bad. And having only two landmarks is such a downside in FFA. Because sure, in a 1v1, you can feel secure. Like if you lose to them in 1v1, their armies, it makes sense that they're going to kill you, right? But you can win a close fight with Ayubids and then have somebody backstab you and just kill your two landmarks. And you can't hide landmarks with them in FFA either. Like you can, you can put your like uh, House of Wisdom very far back, but it's still so haggard. And overall, I just feel like their mechanics, they don't like the bizarre wing is so oppressive in 1v1 or it was pre-nerf. It's still very good, but it's like not that good in FFA. You want to hold on to your gold for other things. And the trades are like cute, but really just their unique units, their mechanics, they just don't really do a ton for me in FFA. And I'm not a huge enjoyer of the Ayubids. I feel like they're a little bit, a little bit tricksy for sure. So next up, we are going to be going to China. So China, I would say is probably an A tier sieve in FFA. I still think if you get like top players playing China, they can do some really, really good work. But they used to be S tier for me, but I think they've been overshadowed by Zhushis and kind of seeing how things, like in my experience, I just feel like they're more of an A tier sieve now. Like they don't have AOE bombards. Um, and also they don't have that like fast castle relic grabbing. They can go very fast castle, but they don't have the ability to get a landmark pumping out these like turbo, turbo, you know, capture, capture uh, monks, right? 
So I think China's late game armies are good. Their economy is pretty damn strong. Uh, they do have the granary economies. They have the tax collector systems, but Zhu Xi's does taxes better. So Zhu Xi's has better passive gold uh, just naturally from having augmented tax collectors. And sure, getting they might be able to boom economically faster on like two TCs, but I'm telling you, establishing infinite gold and having top tier imperial, ar imperial armies, I think is just is the bread and they can compete imperial wise but i think a zhu player would probably just steamroll a chinese player in a straight up uh, late game fight so could be wrong about that but you know it's just my uh, anecdotal opinion here so next we're going to do the ottomans ottomans i think are an s tier sieve the fact that they like even if ottomans are completely starved out of resources right completely starved out of resources they're going to have military schools pumping out janissaries which are a top tier unit and they're also going to have the mehmed imperial armory pumping out great bombard so like ottoman players will typically perpetually have really good armies. Uh, so that's just so strong. But the reason why Ottomans are S tier is simply because of their Imperial army strength. Like Ottoman armies can fend off waves and waves of opponents. The HRE can send their potato troopers and just get steamrolled a hundred times over by the Ottomans. It's, it's brutal, right? <clears throat> Having like eight to 10 great bombards with a stack of Janissaries, which can repair them is just nuts. And also Janissary, like what counters artillery? There's a couple things, spring alts, culverins, and, um, and cavalry are the typical counters, right? Janissaries mow down cavalry with their bonus trench guns. And on top of that, if you try and trade with spring alts, the great bombards will one shot them and do AOE, like it's so nasty. Culverins are your best bet. Sibs with culverins can kind of fight them, but even still the Janissaries will mow down your front line and it's all like all these units are free so they can spend their gold elsewhere. And lastly, Ottomans have insanely good trade too. They have some cool, unique trading mechanics um, with the Seagate Castle, if they want to play that. The Vizier points can give them better trade. And trade is one of the biggest win cons as well in FFA. So I think Ottomans having the best late game army in the game in tandem with having good trade and just all these free units just makes them a really, really powerful civilization. So next up, we are going to be going to the Rus. Rus are an interesting one. For me, they're kind of B tier. I think that Rus have some really strong mechanics. They have the Imperial Landmark, the uh, the Armory, which gives them access to better Spring Alts, which is really nice for late game dueling. Streltsy are a very sustainable, good late game unit. So they can kind of keep a low cost army of Spears and Streltsy and really compete with a good Artillery Death Star. Um, they do have access to Hunting Cabins, which can give them a, a fair amount of gold, but it, it caps out at a relatively low amount, I believe of 300. So Hunting Cabins plus a really, really good high trade house can be like 600 gold a minute, which is not nearly, it's not as good as the English. They don't have as good of an imperial kind of steamroll as the English, but they're still formidable. Um, they can spam wooden palisades for very cheap, which is nice for like just, you know, having layers and layers to defend a wonder. Spaskaya is also a pretty good landmark for defending as well. And they can kind of do some good relic control, getting the warrior monks out, but their castle isn't like so fast uh, that it's going to be like Jushis will beat you to it. HRE will beat you to castle. So, you know, I would say that they're probably a B tier sieve for me, but certainly a contender and can win. They have good artillery. They have a really good wood economy and can get decent passive gold in tandem with having good Imperial armies with uh, turbo uh, turbo rams from the high armory, turbo spring alds, and uh, can, they, they don't mess around, but they're not like on the upper echelon in my opinion. So next up, we're going to go with Mongols. Mongols for me are probably an A tier sieve. I, I was like, if there was going to be like an A plus, I would have Mongols like right here. They would be like chilling there. But overall, Mongols are very powerful. They do not require stone to build a wonder, which is the biggest limiting factor for most sieves, right? For building a wonder. So they, they can often build multiple wonders. They can pack up and move. So if you're getting your butt kicked, you're not dead, right? Like we've all seen the legend of Smeagol and these, and these top Mongol players who just relocate somewhere else and they come back and beat you later. And you're like, oh my God, how'd they do that? So that's really good, but also not having any walls and uh, is it, tough. That's very, very tough. It's, it's not always easy to defend, uh, but yeah, I think Mongols are a great sieve. I think they probably could be borderline S tier, maybe even S tier, it's close, but uh, like the fact that they can pillage dead civilizations for money, they have good trade, uh, they can relocate and move and an FFA game is so damn strong and their wonders are top tier and their wonder defenses are top tier because they can also get stone from trade and uh, the Uvus can generate them stone to develop cannon towers. So for me, Mongols are A tier. Um, definitely, I would say Mongols are better than English in China. So like I would give them like an A plus if I could. I, it's, I'm really close to putting them in S, but I would say Mongols are probably A for me. So next up, we're going to do the Abbasid. For me, the Abbasid are probably D tier as well. I think they're they're powerful. Like their their economy is booming, right? They have some really good trade. They have really good food gathering, and um, their field militaries aren't bad. But they don't have anything in the imperial age that really sets them apart too much. They have a good artillery, though. They have, of course, the uh, culverins and some other tricks like that. But 
Um, I do think that having the two landmarks is such a restrictive factor. They don't have like an imperial army composition that's just going to annihilate someone. Their castle age is really strong when they get like ghoulams and things like that and can field engineer and push you in like a 1v1 setting. Now, that's not to say that you can't win with them, but man, oh man, having two landmarks is such a bad thing in FFA. So I would say Ottomans are going to be kind of in the pits down there and um, not Ottomans, excuse me, the Abbasid. Still though, good economies, good trade. Um, if you can establish good trade and, you know, they can definitely overwhelm people. Um, but yeah, just having the two landmarks is such a restricting factor that I would probably put them in the pits down there. So next up, we are going to go with old Japan. Japan for me is an A tier sieve. I think that um, Japan is kind of like, they're like the, they're like the, uh, basically like the English in some ways. They have insanely good farm ecos. Like Japan's food is top tier. They get four relics for free, which is really, really cool. But the biggest thing that makes Japan so damn good is the Tanegashima gunsmith. So Ozutsu are one of the most powerful units in the game. They can just plow keeps, they can tear down walls, they can trade well in armies. And if Japan can get a doom stack of Ozutsu, like, you know, 40 or 50 of them, micro them well. They have top quality infantry. Samurai are amazing. Their spears are really good. And um, yeah, it's just solid. In Japan, getting the Ozutsu and the free bombard cannons from the Tanegashima gunsmith is so good. So ha being super defensible, uh, super, super defensible with the Shogunate castles, amazing food economy, decent gold economy, getting the duality of the stone and gold is so top tier also, right? So when you're clearing out all the resources on the map, you're getting gold and stone. So that will really help you set up for a wonder if you want to, or a good keep defense. And the Tanegashima gunsmith is quite insane. I think Japan is, is, a, is a good A tier sieve. That would be my, um, my banking on them. It's the Ozutsu, man. It's that landmark. Without that, you know, they would be in the pits, just like not in the pits, but they would definitely be lower. But yeah, Japan's great in like every age too. Their feudal's good, their castle's good, their imperial is super good. They don't have too many weaknesses. They really feel like the English to me. But if I had to like compare them to the English, I would say Japan is probably slightly better than the English. I think the Ozutsu are really good and their food economy is comparable. However, England might edge them out at times when the resource starvation is real because England will keep getting the gold and Japan won't outside of getting their four relics that they get from the Yorishiru. So that is going to be that. So next up, we're going to do Delhi Sultanate. Delhi is an interesting one. Delhi, I kind of feel like is a C tier. Like they're not the worst for sure. But Delhi, to me, um, the elephants are really a kind of a fun thing, but I find they fall off against a lot of late game armies. Uh, the keep spam is really good for Delhi. So if Delhi can grab all of the gold on the map and maybe go fast castle and get some, not gold, but stone, they can build a ton of keeps. They can produce villagers out of that. But Delhi doesn't really have any unique mechanics in the Imperial Age that, in my opinion, make them super strong. Like Ottomans get great bombards for free. And then Delhi gets like an elephant, which is cool. But like elephants are much easier to drag down than 10 bombards, right? But Delhi still has some tricks. The castle age or the castle spam is really good with them. Uh, producing out of castles, but I think Delhi, in order to be competitive, has to grab a bunch of relics. They have to get fast castle. They have to pop like five scholars out there, secure at least three or four relics, or else they're just going to be a potato and not really be that strong. So, but yeah, they got some tricks. The sacred site play is always fun, but typically grabbing an early sacred site isn't that strong when there's seven other people in the game, right? Someone's just going to decap it and you're not really going to get too much benefit. Granted, you could wall it, but you know, I, I don't know. They, they don't feel like the strongest in the world to me. So next up, we're going to go with the Holy Roman Empire. For me, the Holy Roman Empire is probably a C, C, C tier sieve also. They just are so, so, so dependent on relics. And even when they get relics, they're not like just absolute terminators. They're still good. But, you know, if you get three relics with them, you're going to be feasible. Those relics will be generating you 160 gold apiece. But like... That's, I think it's 160, is it? Might be more, is it 200% more? Yeah, but even still, you're you're dependent on relics. If you don't get relics, you're gonna be absolutely terrible. You have like a cool power spike in Castle Age with your men at arms, but most of the time you might get one or two players down near you. And if you can secure a crazy trade from there and bank gold, that's how you win. And they do have really good wonder defenses with the emergency repairs and um, you know some of the other stuff they can do back by putting relics in their keeps and like L's back, back by a wonder is really sexy for sure. But I just feel like their late game armies kind of get steamrolled by some of the other civilizations we mentioned above. Uh, and if you don't, you're just so all in on one mechanic. And if you don't succeed in getting relics or other HRE players would ever get them, then like if HRE has no relics, they're like D tier. They're down here. Like I think the Abbasid might even be better than them. But if HRE gets relics, they can kind of creep up to B tier. I still think like not A tier by any stretch, but you know, I would say they kind of like, we're going to bounce them out by putting them in C because they can be B, they can be D, depends on the relics, but... But yeah, that is going to be that. So next up, we have the Malians. Malians are really tricky for me. I need to think about this for a second. 
I think that Malians are probably not as like what makes them so good in one v one and makes them an S tier sieve in one v one is their uh, their cow boom. Their cow boom is disgusting. The amount of food and momentum they can get is just off the chains. But it's it's not like that crazy. Like their gold, their pit mines can generate them a fair amount of passive gold. But I find that Malian late game armies kind of fall off a little bit. They do have access to the Culverin, which is cool. They don't really have any Imperial landmarks that are super decisive. The Griot Bar is okay. And the castle, the Fortress of the Hunt isn't that good either. Um, yeah, they have some funky mechanics. I would probably put Malians like around like C plus. I still like, I would probably take Holy, I would probably want to play Holy Romans over Malians myself. Um, that's just, you know, the emergency repair is L's back. Uh, you know, getting relics and then wondering is very viable here. But like Malians, I, I just feel like their their cow boom and their castle age pressure is what really makes them super good. Uh, but in terms of Imperial, I'm not as much of a fan. I find that their armies will be overshadowed and will be relatively squishy. But um, yeah, they're still a really cool sieve. And like you can still win with them for sure. Their pit mines are good. But yeah, the pit mines can be removed from the map as you lose ground. And that really sucks for sure. Now, Order of the Dragon, I am really tempted to put them in D tier. I think the Holy Roman Empire is just objectively better than them. So Order of the Dragon for me, they would be like a D plus. I don't know. Like, no, they're D tier for sure. Uh, I, I, I should add an F tier for the real Pits of Hell. But I think Order of the Dragon is so clunky and weird. Your armies are so small. So when you're defending against multiple attacks, like when you're defending a Wonder or something, I find that they just like, it's really hard to have enough troops to defend each area. They can be overwhelmed. And uh, it's just tricky. I mean, I mean, the Civ is really good at steamrolling somebody in Castle Age. So if you go Castle Age pressure with them and like get those Gilded Knights before people are ready and you can overwhelm them and really, really take them down, that's their biggest strength. But overall, they have the same problems of HRE, but HRE can go wider. And overall, I just feel like they're better. Like HRE has the Aachen Chapel, which gives 40%. So they can boom super hard, have a really good food economy. Whereas the 10% from the uh, Order of the Dragon just seems a little bit lackluster. And uh, yeah, I just think Order of the Dragon is a bit of a pit lord civ. So that's going to be, I don't think I missed anything, right? Yeah, that's uh, that's going to be 8, 10. Yeah, that, that should be all the civilization. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. The the ones that I'm uncertain of, like Mongols in Japan, like probably Mongols, like I think could belong in S tier. For me, S tier civs are like, you need to kill them on site or they're going to beat you in the late game. A tier, you can kind of let slide if they're not like trading or really booming too hard. These are civilizations that I don't think you need to worry about too much because if you're playing a an S or an A tier civ, um, you're going to be able to handle most of these civilizations uh, for the most part, unless they have huge trade or something, but you know. Yeah, it's a, it's a tricky one, but let me know your thoughts, guys. I think I think this is a decent one. I think we nailed some things on the head, but again, Mongols, I think, uh, could use maybe a little bit of readjustment. Malians could be in flux, too. Um, HRE and Delhi feel very similar in terms of power levels, and though Abbasid can be good, having two landmarks is just so so bad, and so bad in FFA. So um, that's it, guys. Take care of yourselves. Adios. Dovidzenia. That's going to be it, and appreciate you all. See you all on the other side, and take care of yourself.